Beneath the earth, hidden in the ruins of ancient battlefields and long-forgotten tombs, lie the silent witnesses of war. Old swords, their once gleaming blades now cloaked in rust. Time has tried to claim them, yet they endure. Though their edges have dulled, their forms remain, refusing to crumble into dust. But how can a weapon, forged centuries ago, be both corroded and intact at the same time? What secrets do these rusted relics hold about the warriors who wielded them and the hands that crafted them? Join us as we uncover the mystery behind these ancient blades, right here on History of Simple Things. The iron, the backbone of swords throughout much of history, is an element both strong and vulnerable. Every great sword begins with metal, shaped by fire and the hands of a skilled smith. For much of human history, the swords wielded by warriors were made of iron or steel, alloys that provided both strength and flexibility. But iron has a weakness. When exposed to oxygen and moisture, it undergoes a chemical transformation forming iron oxide, commonly known as rust. This process, called oxidation, breaks down the metal's surface, creating the reddish-brown flakes that we associate with age and decay. Yet, despite this inevitable process, many ancient swords retain their structure. How is this possible? The answer lies in a delicate balance between environmental conditions, the composition of the sword, and the nature of rust itself. When a sword is exposed to air and water, the outermost layer begins to corrode first. However, if the conditions are just right, this rust can actually act as a protective barrier. In certain environments, such as burial sites with low oxygen levels or mineral-rich soils, the corrosion stabilizes forming a compact layer that slows further decay. This is why swords recovered from shipwrecks, bogs, or underground caches often retain their shape despite being covered in rust. A sword's fate depends largely on where it rests after it is lost to history. The conditions of the soil, moisture levels, and the presence of other materials all determine whether a blade will vanish or endure. In oxygen-rich environments, rust spreads quickly. A sword left exposed to open air or shifting soil can corrode entirely within a few decades. But when buried in conditions that limit oxygen, such as clay-rich or waterlogged soil, the oxidation process slows dramatically. The sword rusts, yes, but it forms a protective layer of corrosion that shields the metal underneath. These environments act like natural time capsules, halting the relentless march of decay. Surprisingly, some rust can save a sword rather than destroy it. This may sound like a contradiction, but it is a phenomenon well known to archaeologists. If conditions are right, this layer hardens and stabilizes, preventing further oxidation from reaching the core of the metal. Think of it as nature's own armor, a sacrifice of the outermost layer to preserve the heart of the blade. This process is particularly common in swords forged with high-quality iron or steel, where impurities and alloying elements slow the spread of corrosion. In some cases, swords even undergo a process known as mineralization, where iron particles are gradually replaced by minerals from the surrounding soil effectively turning parts of the sword into a type of metal-fossil hybrid. These mineralized sections remain structurally sound, allowing archaeologists to recover swords that still retain their original shape. A sword's survival is not just about where it was buried, it is also about how it was made. The blacksmiths of old knew that not all metal was equal, and over centuries, they refined their craft to produce blades that were both deadly and durable. In early civilizations, swords were made of wrought iron, a metal rich in slag, a glass-like byproduct that can sometimes slow corrosion. Later, the discovery of carbon steel revolutionized weaponry. By carefully controlling the amount of carbon in iron, 
Blacksmiths could create swords that were far stronger than pure iron alone. Some cultures developed forging techniques that made their swords even more resistant to rust. Japanese katana, for example, were made using a labor-intensive folding process that removed impurities and created a metal with high durability. Viking swords were often pattern-welded, layering different types of iron and steel to enhance strength and resilience. When such blades are buried, their superior metallurgy helps them resist complete degradation, ensuring that even after centuries, their form remains recognizable. Throughout history, remarkable swords have been unearthed, rusted, but still telling their stories. One of the most famous is the Ulfbert sword, a Viking weapon forged with an iron purity that was centuries ahead of its time. Many Ulfbert blades have been discovered rusted but structurally intact, their advanced metallurgy giving them an edge, both in battle and in preservation. In Japan, ancient katana have been found in tombs, their once polished surfaces now dulled with rust, yet their keen edges still visible beneath the corrosion. Even older are the Bronze Age swords, some over 3,000 years old. Unlike iron, bronze does not rust. It forms a patina, a thin layer of oxidation that protects the metal beneath. Because of this, some bronze swords have been found in near pristine condition, their blades still gleaming as if awaiting the hand of a warrior. A rusted sword is more than just a relic. It is a bridge between past and present, a whisper from a forgotten age. Though its edge may have dulled, its presence remains sharp in the annals of history. Every corroded blade tells a story of the warrior who once wielded it, of the battle it may have seen, and of the centuries it has endured beneath the earth. It is a paradox of time, a weapon designed to cut down enemies, now preserved by the very elements that sought to destroy it. And so, when we gaze upon these ancient swords, rusted but still whole, we are reminded of an undeniable truth, that even in decay there is survival, even in rust there is resilience. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for the next video, feel free to share in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.